Okay, hello and welcome everyone to another live streaming with Vital Creatives and i like to start the live streaming of today with the intro of the campaign uh, which is the main theme of the live streamings so uh, i like to to get you the update in case that you didn't saw it and of course we we are still are amazed uh, about the the last days of the past week uh, with the beginning of the campaign you you unlock everything almost everything for this campaign and in the weekend you you made us working in in new in new things and this is the the way that we like to to thank you for your support so the update uh, is here and okay a lot of letters i think but as a summary i could tell you that another character is coming because at the end Camelot can be a real realm without his queen so Pedro Nunez is working right now in the in the design of Guinevere the queen of Camelot okay so as many of you requested we 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 are working hard in order to to give you another miniature with the knight of the round pledge and we hope that we could show you some progress uh, really really soon okay so after the, the design or fastest sculpture uh, will work in the, in the new character and we hope that you like it the, the new okay so as I told before uh, this pledge the knight of the round table is where you get all the characters from this campaign and yes this new character will be included in this pledge okay so here you have what you get with the main pledge for the campaign of course you could uh, choose the characters uh, individually but I think this is the breath and butter for this campaign so again this is the new character okay so we hope you are happy with this this new okay ah of course uh, in this pledge you will get uh, one base for one of the characters that you want maybe not uh, the <laughs> this one because it's so big <laughs> I think and some decoration for the plinth and one scenario kit okay this is the things what are included in this big pledge okay so many of you ask mm, about this question as well so I like to clarify um, I think the, the picture uh, is uh, is very very clear in, in this in this way uh, you will get the miniatures all of them okay and one base one plinth sorry one decoration for the plinth and one scenario kit to uh, to put in in one of the characters I think these uh, elements will complement perfectly this this thematic and this character so you could play and, and create your own 
a ceiling. Okay? And things that are not included in the pledge, but you could get later uh, separately are the chimera colors set and as well the painting secrets for fantasy figures which is a publication that we release uh, with Amo uh, of Mi Jimene and you will find here inside uh, a lot of tutorials about painting miniatures okay so those are not included but you could add to your pledge inside the campaign or later in the pledge manager these uh, don't worry about these kind of things I, I i know that sometimes the the working of the kickstarter uh, for an e-commerce could be a little bit tricky but we hope with these explanations that everything is right now clear for you and uh, don't be shy if you want to ask for some <coughs> something that you want just drop us a line in the comments section or take advantage in the live streaming uh, which I will be with you in the next following hour uh, to respond answer your questions okay so uh, okay i always like to take a, a look to the to the miniatures from the campaign okay probably you already saw it but in the case that some newcomers are seeing the uh, live streaming i hope you like this stuff that we bring to you today okay so let me change the the screen okay hello <laughs> here we have with or out tonight <laughs> okay and let me check the comment section in order to answer your questions, as I said before. Hello everyone, hola y bienvenidos a todos un día más. ¿Qué tal andáis? Hello Sasa, hola Isla, ¿qué tal Rui? Buenas Sergio. Hola Rafa. Bueno, ¿qué tal Tomás? <laughs> Al final, en vez de aprender yo inglés, estáis aprendiendo vosotros español. <risa> bueno, lo importante es que nos entendamos. Eh, estaba explicando hace un momentín, eh, voy a comentarlo en la medida de lo posible, intento siempre comentar todo en, en castellano y en, y en inglés, eh, que eh, hemos eh, subido ya las buenas nuevas después de haberle estado... Eh, dando vueltas y trabajándolo en el fin de semana y bueno, pues un poco por petición popular vuestra eh, es verdad que no podíamos dejar eh, Camelot sin una reina y entonces pues eh, tuvisteis la gran idea de por qué no mm, sacar la miniatura de Ginebra entonces eh, Pedro Núñez ya está trabajando en ella y tan pronto como esté el, el concepto hecho lo veréis y, y bueno, y nuestro escultor más rápido se pondrá manos a la obra también para daros, daros esa nueva miniatura que entrará eh, de forma sin sobrecoste ni nada, de, se añade a lo que ya obtenéis en el pledge de Caballero de la Mesa Redonda, ¿ok? Eh, luego también se podrá elegir por separado para aquellos que tengan un pledge de figuras sueltas, ¿ok? Así que esperemos que esta nueva figura sea de, de vuestro agrado y, y por supuesto que muchas gracias una vez más por vuestro, por vuestro apoyo y porque sin vosotros al fin y al cabo el eh, sacar más figuras todavía hubiera sido imposible. Entonces esto es por y para vosotros y muchas gracias de parte de todo el equipo de, de Big Child Creatives. Eh, ah, 
También he aclarado eh, el tema que habéis preguntado muchos de vosotros, que, que entra en el pledge del Caballero de la Mesa Redonda. Eh, lo podéis ver en el Kickstarter, hemos subido una actualización gráfica que podéis ver todas las figuras que, se, que, se, que habéis desbloqueado y en ese pledge se incluirían todas esas figuras, ¿ok? Eh, inclusive esta nueva de la que estoy hablando, Ginebra. Y, y bueno, pues eh, en cuanto a las figuras, entrarían todas estas. Luego además eh, obtendréis una base para poder poner cualquiera de todas las figuras que os lleváis, eh, más una decoración para la base temática con, con, con los logotipos de la campaña, y luego además un kit de escenografía para poner en una figura, complementarla y bueno poder construiros una escena eh, más impresionante todavía, con más elementos eh, si cabe. Eh, eso es lo que estaría eh, incluido en, en el place de, de los caballeros de la mesa redonda. Eh, ¿Qué no estaría incluido? Eh, el set de pinturas de quimera, tampoco estaría eh, el libro de cómo pintar figuras de fantasía que hemos hecho con Bichai y Amomir. Eh, pero bueno, eh, no os preocupéis porque eso en cualquier caso eh, lo podréis añadir o bien durante la campaña o luego en el Pledge Manager más tarde. Eh, de hecho también estamos trabajando para, para poder traeros más material add-on que podáis complementar y, y bueno, pues eh, al fin y al cabo daros, daros más material porque realmente, realmente nos habéis sorprendido entonces ahora nos toca trabajar para vosotros duramente. Aunque el calor, pues bueno, no nos, deje, no nos deje hacerlo de la forma más liviana posible. Entonces, pues bueno, eh, espero que, que os haya gustado las novedades que han traído, eh, que han traído el fin de semana. Hello, Christoph, how are you? Nice to see you again. Ok, so... Um, the last uh, day in, in the live streaming, I was uh, sketching something quick for you uh, in order to give you some ideas and other possibilities for a character like this green knight. Okay, you could paint this green knight with uh, green colors like uh, the concept part of, from Pedro Núñez uh, and uh, in the miniature. Miguel Matías did in the campaign, but of course uh, you could change the, the color scheme and this is something that I want to, to, to change and um, show your vision and it's okay. I made something quick about uh, thematic, about the autumn, so taking the colors of uh, for autumn forest, okay, so I choose this and I apply to the miniature in a real quick way, okay, so of course the need, this needs a needs lot of refinement, okay, you could spend more time uh, at home in doing this kind of, of things and with more time the results will be more more fine, more fine, ok. Eh, os he mandado un correo esta mañana, checarlo por favor. Eh, sí, Luis Alberto, eh, estamos todavía desbordados, eh, en la medida de estamos respondiendo, eh, vamos, los teclados echan humo, eh, entonces, en la medida que, que, que podamos, te responderemos enseguidita. Ok. So, in the streaming of um, today, I will continue with this process, okay? So, uh, I will apply some, some smoothing uh, in the gradients and uh, reinforce the, the, the color scheme that I had applied onto the miniature with the eyebrows, okay? I will make a combination of two techniques. The other day we saw how to make wet blending, which you could see it was very quick and useful. And today I will apply 
some reinforcements of the hues with the eyebrows, ok? ¿Qué tal, Carlos? Bienvenido. <laughs> ok, so uh, let's start. Uh, later, when I already do the, the work with the, with the eyebrows, I'll start to refine some uh, any part. For example, I think could be fine to make some work onto the onto the head and the helmet. So let's start. And of course, if you want to comment something, be free <laughs> because I'm here to to chat with you and answer you your questions. Okay. Okay, by the way, what, what do you think about the, the new incoming characters that uh, I was talking about? Uh, is, is the one that you like? Maybe you want a, a dragon or something like that? <laughs> okay. Uh, many of you ask uh, to us about uh, Guinevere and we, we thought that was a very nice idea. So, uh, could be a very nice miniature to paint as well. Oops! Okay, some airwave games. <laughs> Sorry for the second. Okay, so for eyebrowing and make some I blending. I call this technique I blending because with the eyebrows uh, I'm able to to make some smoothering uh, on the on the gradients that I had already applied. Okay, so as always, uh, I uh, always I say the, the same. You could make it with only water, but I prefer to use uh, this thinner in order to not obstruct the diras uh, quickly okay so you could uh, mix this uh, acrylic diluent with your paint but first check with other brands that are the ones that not i'm showing to you okay because sometimes these this diluent could affect the texture of the paint but if you use this diluent with, for example, Chimera Colors uh, and uh, Games Workshop brand, okay, you will have not pro no problem in order to, to mix uh, this paint with this diluent, okay? As well with inks uh, are good to mix this, uh, this diluent. And, uh, okay, let's start. Uh, you could add a little bit of water to the, to the mix in this way. In order to not use only diluent, is something about earn <laughs> and don't waste uh, the diluent, okay. And the results are pretty the same. And I put some colors onto my wet palette. Madre mía, Irma. Al final lo acabaremos haciendo, no sé si para esta campaña, pero <ríe> en algún momento tendrá que caer un dragón. La verdad es que a quién no le gustan los dragones. Yo si pudiera tener uno lo tendría ahí aparcado en la puerta de casa, desde luego. Pasando de los coches, ¿no? <ríe> que además un dragón contamina menos. <ríe> ok. I will use some magenta, some blue, and pretty the same colors that I used in the day before, okay? And remember, I use a few colors in order to reduce my palette, okay? And this um, ensures that I'll make something with ambience, okay? And color coherence. I'm always talking about the same things, and I think it it is important, okay. And of course, the, maybe the most important color for this color scheme that I have chose, uh, this color, orange, okay. Why is the most important color? Because uh, the autumn 
color scheme is all about uh, orange colors, okay? You could see how the leaves are painted in orange tono hues, uh, reddish hues, and why not some some greens and so on. But uh, I like to make an, a strong presence of orange in this miniature. Okay. So mm, something more. Nah, I think it's pretty good these four colors okay so for using the eyebrows probably you are used to to use the eyebrows or in other live streaming i i have used the eyebrows so i'm not doing something new but uh, i will explain again okay so I prefer to make my mixes inside the, the pot of the iras, okay? But if you are not uh, used to, to make uh, mixes inside the iras because you need to correct so many times, you could make the, the, the mix here uh, outside the pot, okay? And later you could charge, charge the, the, the paint inside the iras, okay? So let me move the focus a little bit okay so uh, first of all i will use some uh, magenta with some orange okay okay the dilution this is another important question uh, you are shy today so if you are not asking about i will tell you anyways uh, the dilution for the eyebrows is pretty the same that uh, making glazes okay because it's something similar um, I'll make some glazes with the eyebrows instead with the, uh, than with the brass okay so I need to make a smooth gradients okay some uh, let's say some filters of paint I don't want to cover everything with my eyebrows applica application okay so the the dilution needs to be a uh, with more water and a little bit of paint, okay? And when I say water, I mean uh, dilute with water or just water. Okay, how you could check your dilution? Okay, and there's and the obvious thing is you could check your dilution when you apply first a coat over the miniature, okay? You could start to see if you are covering everything, all the previous steps, or you are making only a, a, um, a smooth and transparent layer, okay? Sorry if the, if the zoom of the camera is so big today, because later when I start to paint the helmet, I like to to have a nice zoom into the, the helmet. This is why you are now seeing everything a little bit off of the camera, okay? Sorry, sorry for this inconvenient. Okay, so I'll start to apply this color over the, the leaves and little by little, step by step, I'll making smoother gradients, only a few touches in each part and I'll move on to the other parts, okay? I don't want to, to make something, um, an, a very hard application over the same place because you will start to see how the, the paint runs outside, making the, the spider legs, I think it's called. So the trick is not insist too much in every part, okay? And don't worry if you paint in adjacent parts with some color. I want to make more color coherence into my miniature. So if I'm mixing the colors together, I will get more ambience and color coherence between my colors, okay? Remember, I'm smoothing the gradients and making overall fit together.
the later steps will be defined will be highlighting making um, um, definition with the shadows I think it's called black lining, maybe. Okay, I applied some some glazes here. I am coming again here once the first glaze or layer are dry. It's very quick to see how it dries. And the difference is so subtle, but you could be sure that my gradients now are starting to get smoother. You could notice that I'm I brushing uh, overall in the middle tones and in the saddle. For this, I'll put my miniature in this direction, and I could start to apply this color in order to paint only in the saddles and in the middle tones. Okay, if you want to make some some eyebrowing onto the lights, the process is pretty the same, but uh, turning the, the miniature to this side, okay? Sí, la verdad es que Irla, estamos también nosotros deseosos de ver más personajes, así que la verdad es que os habéis portado tan bien que, que es una excusa perfecta para sacar más personajes. <ríe> la verdad es que nos habéis dejado flipados, chicos. Muchas gracias. Una vez más. Okay, some touches are needed here in the horns as well. Why I'm painting orange red stone in the horns? Okay, I'm trying to get more color coherence again. And a smooth ring some gradients on the horns, okay? Try to think that these uh, creamy horns uh, in some way will reflect the surrounding colors. The surrounding colors are the reddish ones, the orange ones, so on. So try to think about the the way in the that the elements reflect the light and the surrounding colors, okay? Try not to paint only in every part of only one color his own color okay because in the real life you could observe more colors in the in the different elements okay okay with this color i think i'm almost done I want to make something quick in order to to jump onto the head, but I need to to apply more cold colors in some parts. Okay. Again, I must to say that later. I'll need a lot of work in the definition of the miniature, but I think with this color scheme, I could start to define, and I'm seeing better where I'm going. If things are good for me in the very beginning, uh, could be okay at the end of the painting process. 
So at the end, my miniature will like, looks like more or less like this, but more but more refined. Okay. This is another way to to paint. I I don't mean that this the the correct way. Okay, because some painters. Uh, start to paint one part, for example, the sword, and when the sword is finished, uh, they jump to another part and so on. Uh, definitely, is this is not my way because I need to to make these kind of things in order to see the whole miniature at the same time. Okay. Okay, so here a little bit of red stone and you start to see that little touches in other parts will make a stronger ambience in the miniature. Think about this character is, is uh, made by uh, an armor which is turning in uh, some parts uh, into good and everything is connected and flows in like uh, a tree okay so making this this flow of the colors merging one onto the each other uh, will benefit the the sense of something from the from the real nature, okay. Of course, this color as well is reddish color. Could be nice in order to make some uh, shadows onto the reddish. Uh, sorry, onto onto the the green uh, clothes because I'm making filters of color. So when I start to make a filter of red over the the green color I'm making uh, layers of complementary colors okay as you could see um, the complementary colors darken one to the other so you in other words you could mix the colors on your palette or make filters in this way in order to make a subtle mix of them and this is how I'm making some shadows onto the the greenish clothes okay probably maybe a touch of green here could benefit those shadows but It's okay for me right now. I could add some blue to this mix, okay? In order to obtain a cold mix, maybe some green, because green is some kind of cold color, okay? Mm maybe too much desaturated i will use this color is almost a black color but with some hue you could see how it seems like black okay so i will use this color only in the deepest shadows okay but it's better to use this black color obtain it mixing the primary colors together okay is better than using only pure pure black okay this co this black is not pure black is a uh, black with some color information okay so you will see it in your miniature okay a good part to use this color is in the edge of 
the horns. I could smooth the transition from dark to, to light in this way. Subtle touch only is needed. Hello Natalia, how are you? <laughs> Welcome. For the newcomers, don't worry, I'm just started uh, with some placing, some air blending technique onto the miniature in order to obtain smoother gradients okay so i i'm about to to jump onto the the helmet and I start the defining process because i'm seeing that the color scheme is pretty okay for me so now i could start to defining parts uh, this is very important because if something here is wrong for you uh, about the color or something like that uh, now is the time to to choose other color other lining situation or something like that and in this stage you won't spend too much time in order to change anything so this is the very good part about the sketching process okay is different when you have all the or some parts already painted and at the end you you'll find that your colors don't match together so you need to change the color of uh, a painted part you could imagine is more time consum consuming than making this kind of decisions here. Probably you will felt this experience before. Um, it's, it's very odd. Okay, I'm making a strong shadows in this side of the, the silk and the leg. Why? Because these parts of the miniature are facing down. Okay, so I need to apply some shadows in this part. This is why I prefer to make this lining and color sketch with all the, the miniature already mounted. Okay? because I could make these decisions about the, the source of light okay if you paint the, the different parts separately in some cases you will you could start to making some lining scheme and when you mount the this separate part you could find that you make the light from other direction that the the surrounding elements and sometimes for the eye of the viewer is just like uh, uh, I don't know what is happening but something something is wrong <laughs> so for me is more easy to paint things like this as I told you before later comes the refinement if you see some canvas painter the process is pretty similar at the very beginning you could see how the painter is making some kind of quick sketch uh, making some lining decisions, uh, changing values, and so on. And 
when he is comfortable with that, he start to, to add tones, uh, refine edges and this kind of thing. Okay, so I know that the zoom of the camera is a little bit uh, weird, but I hope that you could see these results. I will darken a little bit the, the helmet with this color in order to make some kind of non-metallic metal onto the helmet. A good and non-metallic metal, something, <laughs> something strange, I think. But this character is made from wood. It's like a spirit of the of the forest and is of course a knight so I'll try to, to make this kind of experiment and I think will be very funny so as you could see I'm darken the helmet more than I want in order to get some contrast now with the metallic reflections if you want to create some non-metallic metal effect on the on the miniatures uh, the trick is the contrast okay so in the non-metallic parts the contrast will be the higher on the miniature it's not about to going from from black to white, okay? But you need big contrast on those parts in order to the eye could identify this material with the non-metallic metal, okay? This is the trick. As easy as that. But if you have this place this area of the helmet very light you can't add too much light so if you need contrast at the end you need shadow okay uh, i don't know if i explain myself co correctly but i think this is an important uh, thing about the non-metallic when you don't have any contrast on your non-metallic and you are adding to your light, pure light, or something like that, you need to, to think about adding shadows, not adding light, because you reach it to your maximum light. Okay. It's enough, I think. Okay. I hope that you could see the changes onto the miniature. I could apply more saddle here. Okay, the wall plane of the shield is a plane of saddle. So I will darken this area. And that's all. Okay, perfect. What do you think? <laughs> Happy to see to hear that, Sasha, that is, is, this is, is interesting for you, so try it and, and tell me about the results. <laughs> okay, guys, so this is 
my smoothing process with the eyebrows and now eh, we have only a couple of, of time in the live streaming so instead of uh, start defining all the elements that yeah, this miniature in particular will take so long because they have he have a lot of elements um, I'll focus a little bit on the head as you uh, saw in the previous video I make this kind of trick about uh, painting the miniature uh, without gluing some strategic pieces okay so I recommend you th that you could use this technique as well using a little bit of blue tag in some parts uh, and you could make the color scheme with the mounted miniature and later if you want to make some refinement on some pieces you could unglue the... Oops, sorry <laughs> sorry for the earthquake you could take your piece away and put in another place for painting more comfortable for you okay so i'll start to make uh, some work on the helmet okay so <clears throat> And the color of the of the metal of the non-metallic uh, will be a little bit uh, indifferent for me because I'll make the the metal like w will be reflecting the surrounding color. So uh, at the end, the color is not to thinking. Okay, the non-metallic metal for example, iron or uh, steel, metal, are grey, red, in a grayer tone, okay, yeah, it's grey tone, but this grey is maybe pure, pure grey, is mm, the result of mixing black and white. So, uh, you could make your greys with a little bit of color, okay, so which greys I will need in in this non-metallic okay uh, uh gray with some orange tone for example because in the surrounding areas are reddish orange uh, leaves and this will reinforce uh, the the ambience of the miniature uh, this is for the color but the real thing that will make this sign is the contrast so for the contrast I'll try to make a very high reflection uh, point in some part of the of the helmet. Okay, so this is the trick about the non-metallic metal. Don't worry about the color. Use uh, whatever you you have in your wet palette and try to achieve some kind of gray with those colors. Okay, so I'm using this as my white my white color okay this is not white is uh, a light flesh color okay but uh, i don't like to use pure white in 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 my miniatures so you, of course you could use white and mix a little little bit with other color okay so let's start uh, <clears throat> i'll Take another brass, this one for example, and I'll try to achieve some some grayer tones. Okay, I'll take a little bit of blue, a little bit of orange, and you could start to see mixing blue and orange, you obtain some kind of black. It's pretty the same color, more or less that I was using in the in the iris. Do you remember? Okay, so you will see how gray is this mix if when you add 
songs song white okay remember it's not white but what makes the same start to see the gray color okay this is maybe too grayer for my purpose so as i told in the beginning of the video the color of the autumn the most common color in autumn scents is the orange so i will add more orange to this mix and now i'll start to see how it's turning brownies it's not grayer anymore it's more dark brown or something like that okay so when i add here my my white color okay i'll obtain this kind of brownish color which will match with my ambience okay so i will use this color Okay, so I'm painting now the reflection of the these wooden strands metal, okay? So it's very important as well in the non-metallic metal to highlight edges, okay? Don't forget this. You don't need to highlight the edges with your lighted, okay? With your lightest color okay this color will be fine to highlight these edges right now and this is when you need to be accurate okay Oh, it's very hard to, to manage the paint with this weather. In Madrid, we are now around 40 degrees and the paint will dry in the tip of the brass so quickly. So it's a little bit crazy to, to paint in summer here. <laughs> okay. I'll make here another reflection. And I'll continue with all the edges that I'm finding in this helmet, okay? Remember, I'm not trying to make some wooden effect. I'm trying to make something metallic. Oh, sorry if sometimes i'm out of the camera the dilution here is very very important in order to to be accurate and precise so it's good to to deal with your paint not to paint with thicker paint because it will be harder for you to draw some lines okay so it's about to to find the right point the sweet point i think uh, where your paint is not too much diluted but the paint will flow very easily from your from your brass okay this is the sweet point it's all about a uh, try and correct it's very very easy to correct after your first brush stroke you'll find that your your paint is very thick and your 
not able to make thin lines like I'm doing right now just add some water to your paint okay I'm here adding more reflection here <coughs> and in this side I will add a little bit of light but not too much I want this side of the helmet like my main side for the light I'll make here a stronger reflection than in the other side okay <clears throat> so this is my first layer for the light and to the previous mix I will add now more more white and a little bit of orange okay only to saturate a little bit the color to make it more more strong I think Now you will start to see some car reflections in this non-metallic metal. Okay. And here I need to make another strong highlining point. remember the edges that I was talking about I'm now refining those edges once more time okay now is something near to to the good okay is more or less something like good but now if I want to make a good helmet I could leave this in, in this step okay but because I need or, or I want to make like metal okay I will mix the texture of the good with the reflection of the metal so now I will take my white color now and I will use this color is almost white but remember it's not white and I will add a little bit of orange only a touch little touch why because this is as I told you before, this is my ambience color, let's say that. Okay, and now here comes the metallic look for this element, okay?
sigue reflexión I don't need too much reflection I don't want to extend this light too much in order to make the contrast higher so this is now more metallic than after I could draw here a little bit of reflected light okay and only a couple of touches are needed you don't need to overdo this lining only a couple of touches in some parts, some edges and you are done Okay, I will add a little touch in the other side. I will use a grayer tone this time. To make secondary reflections for this side, okay? And I will add to this part a little bit of light, but not stronger than the main side of the helmet, okay? So I will mix a little bit my previous mix with a, with a darken color, okay? And I will add some light points here, subtle. Okay, and I will add some little little points of light with my lightest color. For example, here a little touch, here another little touch, here. Here again to make lighter. For example, here. Little touches, okay? Those are called light points. This is why they are called light points, because are very, very thin points of light. Okay, so guys, here is my wooden non-metallic metal. This is an strange experiment, but 
I I like it. I found interesting. Now I need to refine a little bit, of course. And see how it has changed because at the very beginning uh, this material was like uh, some kind of good because the texture and his contrast was not too much okay but when i increased the contrast start to to seem like uh, metal okay so this is important to keep in mind when painting different materials okay i'll apply some black lining onto the the horns in order to clean a little bit okay i mix in a dark brown for this purpose okay and i will use this color for these parts in order to separate the helmet and the the horns i think this is called black lining maybe in in english i'm not sure but could be this word I'm adding more lines in the in the horns in order to make more definition to these parts and here something similar I'm painting the separation between the horns and the helmet in order to make it more defined this is so important separation between elements because you'll achieve more definition and more more smoothness in, in your in in your relevel of the of the miniature So okay, I don't know if the the zoom of the camera is good enough to see the metallic part. Of course, could be refined. Okay, and now I want to show you some trick in order to paint diabolical eyes onto this one. So this trick will help you to to make a glowing effect onto these parts I want to to paint the eyes in in a greenish flashing effect okay so I will show you how to do that in a very easy way hello Audrey how are you nice to see you yeah I'm I'm great. <laughs> Hope you the same. Black lining. Thank you, Shata. 
uh, sometimes uh, it's not needed to to be uh, made the the separation between the parts with black it is uh, but anyways it's called black lining okay Okay, I'm making a little bit of black lining in some of the recesses and here I will add a little bit of shadow to increase the contrast in the main part of the, of the head. So you'll have here some light, strong light, strong light and here you have the maximum shadow so this will increase the contrast okay but only a little bit is needed only a touch okay be subtle with these uh, black lining effects okay now i will make a correction onto this light because making the black lining i i missed a little bit of the of the light it's important to to make this kind of refinement with a very sharp brass I'm always uh, talking about the, this kind of brasses, uh, Da Vinci, Maestro, Series 35. Uh, I'm very happy with this kind of brasses because I'm painting this little detail with a number one, as you could see. And for me, are brasses which allow you to be very very precise and you could highlight the tile and so on without the need of being charging the 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 brass every paint stroke brush stroke sorry because this is a number one this is a very relative big brass but with the sharp uh, tip you don't need any more uh, anything more sorry so with this brass you could start you could apply paint for longer times with for example a number uh, two zeros or something like that Okay, for some parts it's okay to to paint with a, a smaller brushes, of course. Okay, I like it. Now, I think the light point. Okay, I'm redoing some parts, uh, some light points, some gradients, okay, making... brass strokes and making some glazes in order to to clean a little bit the, the gradients okay so to make this light point more smoother okay simply dilute your mix a little bit more than usual and when you feel that your mix is flowing on your palette okay dry here the sex of water okay i will charge a little bit more and try if you 
cover the previous work, you need more dilution. The glazes is is like paint with few, very few pigment, okay? But you need to, to notice that you are painting, okay? Don't paint with only water, with some paint. In this kind of work, that you need to be very precise in a small points like this, glazes are your friends. <laughs> Trust me. And okay, I want to show you how I work in these detailed parts. So you could add these steps over and over and when you get uh, something that you like, Okay, stop. It's done. Okay, as I say, I say, say you before. Okay, I want to show you how to make glowing effects on ghostly eyes or the spirit of the forest, like this green night. Okay, so <clears throat> for that, I will use, for example, I'll, I think that. With all of the orange color of the miniature, could be nice to use something different. No, a red stone because this character is not uh, a billion. Okay, is <clears throat> something, something, some, someone used this with with the others. Okay, so it's not a bad type. I will use this green and for my sketch I mix my white color again you could use white in this case and a little bit of this green okay with this I want to paint a little bit inside the eyes okay I will use again a number one you could see that for painting eyes is good as well So, I will use this mix, it's a very, very light green, for painting the eye socket. I'll try to leave some black lining around the eye, okay? So, it's on the camera, I think, yes? Okay. It's easy to paint with the tip of the brush. And I paint with this. I hope that it's not blur in the camera, okay. Maybe. I don't know. I'm painting the edge of the helmet beneath the eye with this color as well. Okay, so you will see now his eye is turned in some kind of a uh, light green. Of course, this is not the final result. Painting eyes is always time consuming, at least for me, because refining the lines is very important. But I think painting eyes like this way that I am showing to you is, is more quick and funny, I think. You could do this trick as well in your Space Marines and it's, it's okay, it's very, very nice, the effect. Okay, so for me it's pretty good, the design, and now 
Sorry, you could see the eye. I hope. Now I need to make something similar in the other eye. You already will know that one eye is the the good one, the easy one, and the other I'm right-handed. The other is the difficult one. So for me this is the difficult one. But as I said before, you don't need to be very, very, very precise with this glowing effect eyes. Okay, well, it's pretty good, I think. I highlighted the the edges around the eye because the the reflected light of the eye will make this reflection visible, okay? Okay. And now you could uh, leave this just in this way but I like to, to add another layer of detail to this in order to make more glowing and smooth these gradients, okay? So, again I'll take my arras and same technique as ever with the air blending, okay? So, in the eyebrows I will charge this nice uh, green color. Maybe it's too, too light, but I want something glowing. Something spooky. Let's see how how fits in in my miniature. Again, the dilution <coughs> you could check that is something dilated. I'm not covering the previous brush strokes on the paper, so I think this is okay. It's about to build layers, transparent layers in the eyes and of course uh, you need a, a little bit of precision don't worry because you don't need to paint only in the inside the eye it's glowing so the reflection could be all, a little bit outside of the eye okay so start to paint with this color little touches and trying to be as accurate as you can and try to not overdo just just is done i don't need any more And here, pretty the same. Okay, guys. So, <clears throat> this is the head. With glowing eyes. I love it because it now looks like like a spawn. <laughs> it's funny. Okay, so this is pretty the process that I'm following with this miniature. So today I'll I'm working on the head and later 
in order to finish this miniature, uh, you need to, to make something similar in every part of the miniature. So, uh, I want to show you how it fits together. Okay, you will find that the head is the only part that has some definition and work, paint work on it. So, of course, will look a little bit strange, okay? But you could imagine that this is the the fun part of these uh, things. The spend time and build your character step by step, okay? Let me check if this is okay in order to see better the miniature. So, what do you think? I hope you like it and I like to see. Look, this this is curious because I'm uh, seeing right now the screen, and you could see how the reflection of my ring is quite similar to the reflection of the helmet. So this is this is curious. This is a nice ima image. <laughs> is is the effect that I created in the helmet? It's some a strong reflection. And you could see that the ring works in the same way. And in this way you could make non-metallic metal whatever you want. This wooden helmet is not metallic now. So people was a pleasure as every day to, to be with you. Uh, and uh, once again uh, we don't get tired about uh, saying these kind of things to you. Thank you very much for your support. As I said in the beginning of the video, uh, we, we launched a, a new in the Kickstarter and it's about another, another character is incoming for you. And this is the way that we like to... to to say thanks to you for your support and, and your kindness. So stay tuned because in the following days you will see uh, Ginevere uh, is coming to Camelot. <laughs> so we hope you like it and we are preparing um, many more surprises. So uh, we hope that we make it bigger even together with you. Okay, thank you very much guys and remember um, uh, next Wednesday will be David Zarroba with you and next Friday will be Jaime de, Garnita, de Garnica sorry, Jaime, <laughs> uh, painting Echoes of Camelot with you. So until then stay safe, stay healthy and stay painting people. Thank you very much. <laughs>